Several years ago, I was at the Milwaukee Art Museum and I bought this coffee cup after seeing an exhibit of Rembrandt drawings by the artist Rembrandt. Um, and I bought this coffee cup there just as a reminder of, of the time and I ended up keeping it with me and I, and I take it to classes with me and I drink water all day. There's a quote on here from Rembrandt that I always really liked. You think of Rembrandt as this magnificent painter. He says, of course you will say that I ought to be practical and I ought to try to paint the way they want me to paint. Well, I will tell you a secret. I have tried and I have tried very hard, but I can't do it. I just can't do it. And that is why I am just a little bit crazy, Rembrandt apparently said. This coffee cup is cracked all down the side. Only paint, I think, is keeping it together at this point. Rembrandt's quote reminds me that our experience is cracked and jagged and shattered. And even those of us who seem to have it all together sometimes don't. I think, for example, of a book from the Hebrew Bible that I teach all the time, the book of Ecclesiastes, or in Hebrew, Kohelet. The speaker there, Kohelet, this, this preacher of the assembly, he essentially sees human experience as fractured, as cracked, not just between humans and humans or between humans and, and nature. He sees there as being a kind of fracture between humans and God, uh, signaled throughout a repeated phrase he uses in his book, vanity of vanities, or total absurdity or futility of futilities. Kohelet sees God not as, not as someone to pray to at nighttime with many, many words, but as someone who's to be feared, um, someone who is distant. And he sees the effects of this rupture, this fracture, in every aspect of his life. He sees wicked people flourishing, he sees good people failing, um, and he finds a lot of frustration in this. The book of, of Ecclesiastes itself ends with a very stark and haunting vision of death in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. In fact, the vision uh, is an extended metaphor of a house falling apart, of the beams cracking, and of, of the utensils like bowls and cups and things in the house crashing to the ground, and eventually the person dies. I'm interested in the Bible's depictions of fracture in disorientation because they tell us so much about who we are and what we've experienced, frankly, as people. So when I do academic study, um, when I think, when I meditate, when I read, I like to think not just about what makes sense, not just about what looks good, not just about coherence, but also about the fracture, the break, also about the ways in which things break down. I like to think about the ways in which things don't make sense. I like to think about the questions. I like to think about characters who, like Rembrandt, see the world as something fundamentally that they can't live into in the way that they want to. I'm attracted to this process then, which we see all around us and in our own lives and in many of the biblical characters, a process which, which begins with orientation. Everything is fine, the world is perfect, everything's static, uh, but moves into deep and sometimes very painful disorientation, where experience is shattered um, and where narrative is lost. Only after that narrative is lost and only after um, the glass breaks, as it were, uh, do we then find a journey back into coherence, uh, back, into, back into life, to resurrection after death?